Magnetic Flux Magnetic flux describes the quantity of magnetic field lines that pass in a perpendicular direction through a given surface area and is represented by this equation. Phi, or the flux, the magnetic flux, remember B stands for magnetic, equals B dot A. Phi is the Greek letter phi and it stands for flux. Adding the subscript B here makes it magnetic flux. The unit of magnetic flux is the Weber, also known as WB, where one Weber equals one tesla meter squared. Here, we have a visual representation of what flux means. We can compare the flux between these two loops. Loop A has three magnetic field lines passing through it, while loop B has six lines. So that's going to be this value here. This is like how many, how strong is the magnetic field? Loop B has twice the flux as loop A. Twice the field lines going through means twice the flux. Let's see a numerical example. When the strength of the magnetic field here, these lines here, that's the magnetic field, is 10 tesla, and the area of the loop is two square meters, the magnetic flux shown below is 20 Webers. So let's use our equation. The flux equals the magnetic field times the area of the loop. So that would be the strength of the field is 10 tesla. The area of the loop is two meters squared. Therefore, the amount of magnetic field going through the loop is 20 Webers. That's the flux. This here is a dot product. The AP2 equation sheet also gives the following equation for magnetic flux. Taking the dot product of two vectors, so this dot, as opposed to a cross product, which we've seen before, that ended up with sine theta in our equation, a dot product, you end up with cosine theta. So taking the dot product of two vectors can be rewritten as multiplying by the cosine of the angle between the vectors. But in what direction does the area vector point? See, both of these are vectors. Uh, magnetic field, that's easy to see, right? Those are, those are arrows, so those are vectors. But the, the area of the loop is also a vector. So let's look into that. Let's quickly compare dot products and cross products. In the magnetic field unit, the cross product was defined as one of the two ways to multiply vectors. The dot product is the other way. The cross product multiplies the perpendicular component of one vector with the other vector. The answer is also a vector and is perpendicular to both original vectors. So that's what we did already. So if we had velocity this way and we had a field going that way and this was a 90 degree angle, then we would end up with a force either up or down depending on what the charge of the um, particle was. And these were all perpendicular to each other and that was how we did the cross product. However, the dot product multiplies the parallel component of one vector with the other vector. This answer is a scalar. It has no direction. Flux is not a vector. So once again on the next slide, we're going to talk about this vector, the area vector. Here is our loop. Now our surface is right here, the surface of the loop. We are going to draw a normal line to that surface. So the area vector is going to point out of the loop so that that forms kind of a 90 degree angle with the surface of the loop. If the magnetic field is pointing straight through the loop, as shown here, then the angle between the normal line and the magnetic field vector is zero degrees, right? They're parallel. There's a zero degree angle between those vectors. Cosine of zero degrees is one. So this whole thing here just becomes one. Therefore, you get maximum flux when the magnetic field lines go straight through the loop, which does make common sense. But what doesn't make sense is that when so usually if you see a loop and you see a field going this way, you might think that's 90 degrees because it looks like the vector is perpendicular to the surface, but that would lead you to have zero in here, which would be minimum flux. So you have to remember that the area vector is actually a normal line that is already perpendicular to the surface. To the right, 
we now have a magnetic field that's going through the loop at an angle this way. It's pointing at a 60 degree angle north of east. Cosine of 60 degrees is 0.5. Therefore, if your magnetic field gets pointed upwards at a diagonal of 60 degrees, you will get half of the maximum amount of flux. So what, this, what is that cosine doing? Well, let's look at it. Here is a right triangle, right? So here's 60 degrees. So cosine 60 is related to this vector here. So only this component of the magnetic field is contributing to flux. You don't get the full magnetic field vector now. You only get the part that's going straight through the loop. This whole component of the magnetic field is not contributing to flux. To the right, the magnetic field vector is pointing straight up. This vector does not go through the loop at all. There's a 90 degree angle between the field, the magnetic field, and the area vector. Cosine of 90 is zero. Therefore, zero flux. If you have a loop, but then your magnetic field is parallel to the loop and not perpendicular, none of the lines, the field lines, are going to go through the loop. Therefore, zero flux.